Hello ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. My name is Quasar49 and welcome to another entry in the discussion log. But this isn't just any old entry, no no no. This is a full discussion and exploration of the spinning sensations that are moving the nation. Machines that swirl you around to the best sounds in town, the queens of any fairground that are not here to take part but here to take over! Yes, yes, yes! It's time to talk about waltzers! Guys, I, I, I think it's official. I think I've found what I've been looking for. No more updates, no more videos, nothing else matters at this point. Some people run off with the circus while I'm running towards the waltzers. Okay, I might be overreacting slightly, but what are you supposed to say when you find your latest favourite ride? It's my opinion that you won't find a more unique, stylish, and in most cases, atmospheric ride than a waltzer. Why? Well, sit back and let me tell you, because this video serves as your masterclass on the ruler of all fairground rides, the waltzer. First off, an extremely quick history lesson, because the Wikipedia page doesn't offer much. Can somebody add to this, please? Congleton, Cheshire. The 1920s. A Mr. Dennis Jeffries is sitting in his study and thinking to himself, How can I make a variation on the carousel, but, you know, more lit? <laughs> this is the dumbest thing I've ever said. After working through a few versions, he eventually gets his ride built and uses his two nieces as the testers. Presumably nothing happened to them, and the waltzer was essentially born. The ride type would then see many improvements and redesigns from 1933 onwards, and would be refined by companies such as Maxwell & Sons for the showmen of Britain. From the 1950s onwards, it would become a staple of British fairgrounds, and would always grab your attention with its massive hand-painted signs. Generally, it was considered a family ride, suitable for those young and old, with its gently swinging cars. But that aside, let's take a look at what they turned into, which brings me to the first point of why waltzers are amazing, the atmosphere. Let's go, let's get serious! <laughs> Somewhere around the late 1980s, Showman just said, to heck with the history, we're going to make our machines into travelling nightclubs. And, well, they were clearly a hit, because now most travelling waltzers tend to live up to that standard. Some still like to be family rides, but for the most part, when you see a waltzer at a fair, you know you're in for a good time, full of flashing strobe lights, smoke machines, and loud music. Don't get me wrong, younger riders can still go on them, but as the 1990s rolled around, it was clear that the ride was catering more and more to teenagers and heavy thrill seekers. And even if they aren't filled with lights and fancy equipment, they're still a ton of fun just to hang out at. I got the opportunity to go back to Funland the other week and just chatted for hours and hours with the operator Tom. The atmosphere behind waltzers heavily relies on the people working it, and over at Funland, it's clear that the staff are having just as good a time as the riders. Did you just say give it some? Give it some. You're screwed. Say peaky blinders. Oh, peaky blinders. And no, I haven't been asked to say this. I'm simply showing my support for these operators that really care about what they're doing. Something like this, like the new ones, the fair trade ones, I'm pretty sure will go up with them around here. Yeah, about the same price as what benefits do, pretty much. Yeah. Like around 200 grand, 250 grand around there. Brand new. Yeah. But people are selling second hand ones all the time. Yeah. The only problem, buying one is only half, half the trouble. It's I mean, maintaining it. maintaining it is the big issue. Like, as they mentioned in the documentary on Netflix, something needs painting, something needs fixing all the time. I've only been here this year and last year. Last year we had this Jonathan Dantas, it was like the old... It wasn't like this, but it was still a Maxwell book, sir. Yeah. It's, uh, it had like... 
old wooden car. Yeah, it was a proper, I know the dancers waltzes, yeah. Like with their cushions. And, and it's yeah. all like hand painted on and it's this, yeah. yeah. I think it's the best ride in the park. As well as the workers, you've got some call outs that just everybody knows. It's overused, yes, but everybody knows what to do when you say oggy oggy oggy. Oggy oggy oggy! Oi, oi, oi. Oggy oggy oggy! Oi, oi, oi. Yeah! There we go. Oggy oggy oggy! <laughs> To this day, waltzers still dominate the fairground, because some of them just go all out. Machines like Albert Evans Atmosphere Creator, Percival's Waltzer, and the Avalanche all like to fully disorientate their riders with expensive sound systems and light shows. But that's not all that's disorienting the riders. Oh, I'm sorry, America. What was that? You think that tilt wells are better than waltzers? Oh, sweetie. It's a cute ride and does the job well, but let me ask you this. Do tilt a wells have massive light shows, banging tunes, and actual human beings running along the platforms doing freaking jumps and doing tricks while spinning the cars? No. I didn't think so. That's right, health and safety lovers, buckle up for a nightmare as young lads hop on these fast-moving platforms to give you more g-forces than you've ever had in your life. Walking the waltzer is an art, and these guys make it look easy because they're having the time of their lives. Think about it for a moment. Have you ever seen another ride in the world where the operators are actually interacting first-hand with the ride? Sure, there are rides where the operator has to be on the ball to make the experience more exciting, but they're always separated by levers or buttons. They aren't actually grabbing the ride and making it look cooler in the process, are they? And I think that's one of the reasons why I love these rides so much. The thought that someone like you or me is running around on these platforms, spinning cars and interacting with the riders, is just so unique and cool looking. I honestly think this guy put it best. Well, basically, who's looking good? Somebody on the <laughs> back of kiddies rides, right? Or spinning around on the waltzes on the board, slapping cars with your own tunes on. Do you know what I mean? You're getting no better than that, are you? You're looking top <laughs> on the fair compared to somebody on the water shoot. If you're up for it, get a job on the waltzes because there's no else. And you're probably thinking, oh, that doesn't look too hard. They're just balancing themselves and pushing things around. And yes, while some make it look easy, trust me when I say it's not. It often takes years to learn how to do this professionally just because there's so many things to watch out for. As my friend Tom will now explain. You're gonna be in a mini documentary. Come on, Tom. Come on! This will be good. Yes, it, it, there we go. To start with, it's pretty simple. When it starts, you just stop walking. <laughs> so it's, it's, when it's moving, obviously you lose count of the one boy. You yeah. that way. The best, easiest way to walk is counter block boy, so against it. Right. Because when you do that, your walking pace pretty much matches the pace of this. And so you're actually staying in the same place. Yeah. So when you're walking, you're not moving anywhere. You're just, you're just walking like that, basically. Yeah. Is that right. how you start out? You just kind of... But what the hard part is when you're walking with it, because not only are you moving the platform, you're also walking on the platform. Yeah. So you're moving twice as fast. So there's more forces being applied to you, but you're also varying your balance as well, because not only... You've got to keep the balance fine through, through the dips, but also, yeah, yeah. you've got to take care. Like, yeah, I mean, when you're spinning a car, like, I imagine that you've got to catch it at the right time. You yeah, can't yeah. always just, like, grab onto it and go. You've got to there get is, it from the edge. There is a knack to it, yeah. I mean, obviously, like I said, to by default, the cars want to go out. Yeah. So, if the car is stuck out here, for example, this car was out, you could, but it wouldn't be the safest thing to just go out here and reach and bring it back. Because one, it's going to be very heavy, so you're probably not be able to bring yeah. it back. And you, this one's going to like swing in anyway, but so you yeah. can't like... So normally, your best bet is to wait until you get to the flats in the back. Because at the oh. flats, you don't have to worry about the cut. All the cars will be evenly placed. Yeah. It's not like here, where you don't have to worry about being hit by a car. Yeah. Because in the flats, there's no dips, so... You can literally stand between the cars for a short period of time before you get to the your first dip, and you'd be fine. And that, that is the best place to get into position, and then all you do is give it a tap. 
Damn. You, you see all these stuff. I, I was probably showing off just then. But no, you, you can show off as much as you like, Tom. Some kids, though, grow up walking the waltzer, and their parents allow them to work on the ride if they're experienced enough. Well, we've got a kid walking right now. Check this out. He's what, maybe 13, 14? Because once you've got it, the technique never seems to leave you. Take Henry Danter, for example, a showman at retirement age who owns Treasure Island Amusement Park in Stourport on Seven. You gotta, what you do, don't look down. You, you gotta feel your feet, you gotta move your legs. It's all about confidence, really. It's how you feel in yourself. It's how you hold yourself, it's how you bend yourself. Bend your knees as you go around, bend. Okay? Because the ride is twisting all ways and shapes. And that's how your body you've got to react to it. Float a little bit. Float. You floating? Henry grew up walking the waltzer. And even approaching retirement age, he proves he hasn't lost his touch. Because if you, if, you, if you don't move with it, you're going to fall over and hurt yourself. If the car hits you, you're a goner. We'll send that car around. Then we shove that one around. And we go like Jenny this. might want to learn, but Henry's not going to throw her in at the deep end just yet. What you got to do, you obviously face scan. Now watch me. Right? You've got to be fast on our feet. But don't do that. Oh, he's not going to learn it in five minutes. I, I, I would say by Easter she'll be able to have confidence to be on it on her own by Easter but it'd probably take it three years to be professional. So, yeah, walking the waltzer, it's cool as hell. It's like a ballet with ride cars. I mean, look at this guy in the blue shirt. He's just showing off at this point. Finally, it's just a good ride. There's really no other way I can close off this video other than to tell you that the whole thing is simply brilliant. When you sit down in the cars and start spinning at incredible speeds, giving you high levels of g-force, paired with the intensity of the music, the lights, and not to mention the walkers, there's really nothing else like it. It is a lot of fun working on the horses. You've got your music, you've got strobe lights, you've got smoke machines. It's a dream for a 16 year old. On no other ride can you get this kind of atmosphere or into interaction, and weirdly enough, it's almost exclusive to Europe now. After talking to some American Vision Park staff members and doing some research of my own, it's clear that there aren't many waltzes around in the US. tilt -a whirls are a variation of the ride, but they give you nowhere near the same experience. Waltzes are far more intense and go a lot faster than tilt -a whirls do. So, one of my fans the other day said to me on a server, um, he's an American, I think, uh, and he said, tilt -a whirls are better than waltzers. So, Can I get your opinion on that, Tom? I don't actually know what tilt -a whirl is, but I've heard it's very similar to a waltzer. It, to me, I mean, to be rude, but a tilt -a whirl is a waltzer without style. It's boring. An American alternative. <laughs> it's an Amer yeah, it's an American knockoff, so like it's a bit... Like many American alternatives. <laughs> yeah, like many, yeah. Plus, American health and safety rules would probably have a fit if they saw what some of the walkers do down here. Now there is one more thing I should probably talk about. There's other tricks. I, I guess you could call them tricks because they're not required. Yeah. But like, if you look at videos online of like waltzes at a fun, like any like weekend fun fair, you just see them like jumping on, jumping on. Yeah, off. and like they sometimes hang on the edge of the thing to make it spin faster. Which, which is show off for girls. Yeah. The waltzer. A ride infamous for attracting the opposite sex. You can pull girls on other rides, but the waltz is the main one, I'd say. They don't call it the fabulous waltz for nothing. Have you ever have you pulled any girls on here yet? <laughs> Come on. But but no. Probably best I don't. Before the video ends, I just want to say a big thanks to Tom for letting me chill at the waltzer with him for a few hours and showing me how it's done, as well as spinning my car as fast as he could to build up my tolerance. If you want to know something cool, I only started two weeks ago. Stop it. <laughs> as well as that, he was just super cool on camera and all of the other staff members were really fun to talk to and interact with. Thanks guys! New ride trailers and update information is all on the way in the coming weeks as finally we're hitting the summer season. Hope to see you all next week for the finale of Adventures in Azavin and if you'll excuse me, I need to go and make a waltzer in my back garden. Bye. And the employee of the week this week is... Little One. For orderly dispatch on Mr. Smiley.